Well, good morning. This is Jim Moore, and you are watching or listening to the program Words of Encouragement. It's Monday, August 19th, 2024, episode number 733. And we're calling this the Supreme Will. How to find the Supreme Will of God. I want to take a minute to show you my t-shirt, okay? Don't tread on me. Isn't that a great t-shirt? Somebody told me that I should show that, so there you go. So, I hope you're having a great day. Lots of stuff happening. I kind of was conflicted this morning if I wanted to do a words of encouragement or a justice for America. So it might be a little bit of a mix of both, but really I want to talk about what I think, what I believe according to uh, what God says is the supreme will of the Lord, the most important thing. And I think sometimes we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the will of God is for our life and we, we kind of beat ourselves up and we're, we're trying to figure, you know, where we're supposed to go, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to do it, and all of that is good, right? Not diminishing or saying that's bad at all. We should be, you know, the scripture says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And boy, I've had to learn that the hard way. And he will direct your path. So, you're getting in the car starting for the day. You bow your head, say, Lord, I acknowledge you today. I'm acknowledging my need for your guidance and so on. And he says, great, I'll do it. I'll gu-. And so... Seeking the Lord's will in our day-to-day, big stuff, little stuff, yes, 100%. However, I want to talk about building a foundation of walking out the will of the Lord. Now, you may not think this applies to you, but if it doesn't apply to you, it most definitely is going to apply to someone you know. So you need to be able to articulate what I'm about to talk about in simple terms so when other people are struggling, because other people are going through what you're going through too, right? I mean, the, again, the scripture says that there's no test that's come upon you, but such as is common to man. So the enemy's desire is to make us think, well, I'm really unique and my situation is so unique, nobody really understands me. And that's not true. All right. Before we get going, I'm going to encourage you to uh, subscribe to, if you're on YouTube or Rumble, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I've come to find out there's... a maybe a thousand or more people that haven't done that yet. If you're one of them, please take the time to do it. And then hit the notification bell so you'll get it uh, the notified when we come on. Now, some of you get notified when we come on to Facebook, and that's wonderful. I appreciate that. But it would be very helpful if you go to YouTube, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for that as well. All right, so the supreme will. Everybody say that with me. And go ahead and talk to each other. Let's get the algorithms going and so on. The supreme will. What is it? What is the supreme will of God? Now, before you jump to an answer and fill in the blank, let me just say this. The supreme will of God is actually written down in the scripture. Okay, now that's the first thing to realize. It's in the Bible. Okay, it's, it's actually there. He, actually, God says it. Okay. I'm going to go there in just a minute, and I'm going to give it away here right now when I, when I talk about um, uh, the word salvation, okay? Because, yeah, I just gave it away. But I'm not going to tell you the scripture until I talk about salvation. So if I were to ask you, let's just say real quick, if I were to come up to you and I did not know anything, zero, about God, and I said, hey, I've heard this word salvation, what does that mean? How would you describe that to me? How would you tell somebody... Hey, what does salvation mean? Uh, mm, uh, mm, mm, I'm not really, uh, you know. Okay, I want to break it down in the simplest terms, not because I want to insult your intelligence and you're not capable of going deep. <laughs> I know all of you guys are, but it is good sometimes to just review and so on. So think about the word salvation outside of biblical terms for just a second. What, uh, how could someone say, I have received salvation. Okay, think of, okay, well, let's say it this way. The word salvation simply means to be saved. Saved, not biblically saved. We're not there yet, but just saved from a situation, from a danger, from peril. Okay, let's use one of many examples, a burning building. You've all seen pictures of somebody hanging out of a window of a burning building. They need to be, what? Somebody say it. They need to be saved, right? From what? From peril, from danger, from dying. They need to be saved. 
Now, sometimes we use these words and, and there's the natural and the spiritual and so our minds kind of, you know, to be, salvation simply means to be saved, okay? It often refers to a person or a situation. Somebody says, okay, so this guy came, this fireman came, he got up on his, his ladder and he saved me from peril. That is what's called salvation. I have received salvation by the hands of this fireman. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Now, why is that important? Because oftentimes we, we miss the simplicity of a word, okay? Um, and again, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I'm just saying the word is really actually very simple. It means I got saved. I got saved from a car wreck. I got saved from drowning. I got saved. Okay. So, all right, let's transfer that now into the spirit. Hey, Carrie, God bless you. What does it mean to be saved, not in the natural, okay, Saved from drug addiction, saved from, you know, a bad relationship, saved from abuse, saved from, again, money problems, anything that you could be saved for. Okay, that's what salvation means in the natural. Okay, what does it mean in the spirit? Well, Jesus said what it meant. It's very simple. Jesus said this. Okay, well, it, yeah. Actually, did you know the name, the name Jesus, Yeshua, or translated from Yeshua in the Old Testament, Joshua, maybe you didn't know that, Joshua, Jesus, same name, exact same name, it's Hebrew, Yeshua. Yeshua. The name Jesus simply means God saves, the Lord saves. Yah saves, Yeshua, God saves, Jesus going. Okay, so what? how do we know that? Okay, well, the angel of the Lord, now, and again, this is the messenger of God. This is God. This is not a preacher. This is not a denomination. This is not some weird doctrine. God himself came in the form of an angel. I don't mean it was, you know what I'm saying. A messenger angel, Gabriel, the messenger angel, came to Mary and said, you're going to have a baby. You will call its name Jesus. And then he said, why? Could have called him Tom, Dick, or Harry, or or." Jojo or whatever, he said, you're going to call him Jesus. Why? Because he will save. Okay, I know I'm going a little long on this, but this you got to know this. You need to know. Somebody says, hey, what does salvation mean? Or, hey, what does it mean to be saved? I mean, you need to be able to tell people, you know, first of all, I've been saved. Saved from what? Oh, well, I don't know, from a bad life, from my addictions, from this from that you know okay that's all really great but what does god say you're saved from okay what does <laughs> well good morning what does the bible say you're saved from and not what not all of, i mean we could be saved from a lot of stuff i've been saved from a lot of a lot of things a lot of bad things most of which i did to myself all of that is right yeah 100 good right but what did god say you're saved from well it's actually contained in the name you should call his name yeshua because he will save his people from, are you ready? You all know it's your way ahead of me. Somebody write it in. He will save from sin. What every human needs to be saved from is not a bad life or a bad relationship or a burning building or a sinking ship or a sickness. I mean, yes, come on, yeah. I mean, right? Who do, yes. Yes, okay. I would like to have been saved from the mosquitoes that bit me this morning when I was trying to do this program outside. Okay, that's all. But he, every human being needs to be saved from their sin. <clears throat> you will call his name Jesus, for he will save from sin. Okay? So salvation means to be saved that's, it is a, is a lengthy form of the word saved, okay? And what are we saved from? If anybody ever asks you, or if you ever have the occasion to explain to someone about what God has done in your life, remember this. He will save, Jesus will save his people from their sin, not all the sins of the world, you know, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about politics and talking about this and that, and I'm 100%, I get it, it's our responsibility, I'm 100% for that, but ultimately, we're not being saved from bad situations in the world. Bad situations, are you listening to me? Hey, Tammy, God bless you, nice to have you. Bad situations in the world come, not 
just mysteriously from some, you know, whatever. I mean, yes, there's a dark force it's called Satan. But bad things happen because people are bad. Okay? <laughs> Good. Bad, listen to me now. Bad things happen in the world. Do you realize, okay, I'm going to go political for a minute, so don't freak out. If Donald Trump gets elected, which is, I think, the best hope for America right now, I really do with all my heart. Kamala is not the best hope for America. I'm just saying, okay? Don't love or don't hate either one, okay? Love them both, okay? Don't necessarily love what they do, but you get what I'm saying? If he were to get elected, would that necessarily change the world? No. You talk about a root cause. Do you know what the root cause of the world is? Well, Jesus came to address the root cause. He will save his people from sin. Bad people do bad things. Sinful people do sinful things. Hurt people hurt other people. What we see in the political realm and the governmental realm, in our laws, in our culture, is about not doing good. It's about being bad. Okay, so you get what I'm saying? I'm all for the political climate changing. I, I'm for it way probably more than you even realize. But it doesn't necessarily change a human heart. You see, the core issue is the human heart. Just think of it this way. What, what would it be like if everybody in the world knew Jesus, knew their creator, knew the reason, if everybody was saved from their sin? Do you think we would have to be battling over what's going on in the political or the legal or the governmental realm? No, we would not have to be at all. Okay, there would be no more jails. Okay, there would be no more police force. We're talking about this is, this is heaven. You think there's police officers, heavenly police officers floating around making sure people keep the law in heaven? No! Okay, you get what I'm saying. Let's not forget the root issue is not policy, although policy is, a, is an issue. It's a big one. Major. God's involved in it. The devil's involved in it. I hope we, we're involved in it. But the main issue is this thing right here, the human heart. Okay? All right. So now, now that you got that, salvation means to be saved. To be saved from what? From our sin. Every human being needs to be saved from their sin. Period. The end. It doesn't matter if you believe it. It's still the truth. One day you'll stand before God and find out it was true. All right. So let's uh, attack this issue, the supreme will. Well, I think you probably already figured it out by now. Okay? Write it down in your, your comment section right now. The. Three words. The. Supreme will. And again, I want to start by saying we spend a lot of time looking for the will of God in our lives. And that's not bad. That's good. It's right. Okay? We maybe don't do it even as much as we should. However, I want to talk about the rock bottom foundation. If you are spending time seeking God for His will in your life and you don't have the foundation, everything else I mean, I think God is good enough. He'll lots of times show you, you know, I'll do this, marry this person, work at this job, blah, 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 blah. He'll do all that. That's, I'm not, I don't want to blah, blah, blah. I don't want to, I don't want to make you think I think it's not important. It's, it's probably way more important than even we know. But it's not the most important thing. Okay? Again, I'm going to say it again. If you don't get the foundation, the house will crumble. It doesn't matter if you get everything else right if you miss the foundation. Jesus said that. He said, everybody's life is like building a house. Some people build it on a foundation, a rock, a found, you know, concrete, whatever, you know, solid rock. And others just build it right on top of the dirt. And what happens? He says, when the storm comes, not if it will come, when it comes, hey, the one that is like, like drilled down into the rock, you know how they do that? They drill and then they put like, a, like bolts and then they fasten it down. So that one's going to stand. But the one that builds it just on the dirt and it's not holding on to anything, it's going to blow away. And then he said what that foundation was. Okay, so let's talk about what is the... So not one of you wrote that down, right? <laughs> Sorry. Write it down in the comment. Come on, somebody talk. The supreme will. All right, are you ready for the scripture? Are you ready for the verse? <clears throat> the supreme will is found in 2 Peter 3.9. Okay, you might want to write that down too. 2 Peter 3, 9. Okay. And I, I kind of chopped the verse up because it's kind of long. The Lord is not willing. Now, thank you, babe. 
<laughs> Somebody's listening. <laughs> okay, so in this case, the supreme will is not positioned from the positive, but the negative, actually. The Lord is not willing, okay? Now, I only say that because some people think anytime you don't approach it from, you know, if it were you and I, we would write, the Lord is willing, blah, blah, blah. But he said, this is my supreme will right here. The Lord is not willing that any should perish. Okay, that would be the negative. Not willing that any, and any means any, okay? That means you, whoever it is that's watching. This verse is written for you to understand His supreme will for your life right here. Oh yeah, I know that. Well, okay, okay. Let me read it again. The Lord is not willing that any should perish. Okay, why did he use the word any? Because it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He shall save his people, all of his people, you know, who want it from their sin. All men and women need to be saved. Saved from their sin. See, I've, I've seen people write on the internet, man, I don't need to be saved, I don't need a savior. Actually, yes, you do. And you may not think you do, but one day you'll agree with it. He's not willing, that's the negative, not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anyone to go into eternity, into a Christless eternity in a place that we call hell. He's not willing that any should perish, but, here's the flip, here's the positive, okay, but that all should come to repentance. Now, what does that mean? I'm trying to keep it simple. What is, you need to be able to tell somebody what the supreme will of God for their life is. Linda and I, we get people all the time asking us, would you pray? I'm trying to get God's direction, all that. I get that. I really do. And, it's, and, I, and again, I don't. I want to say this over and over. I don't want to minimize that. But sometimes we need to ask ourselves, am I building my house on the supreme will of God? Not willing that any should perish, but that all, any and all, okay? You can write that down, okay? A-N-Y, three-letter three word, A-L-L, three-letter word. That means you, okay? It means everybody. It means your kids. It means every single person in your family. This is God's will for it. And this is something that you ought to be praying for every single member of your family. Because you can absolutely 100% pray with confidence that every time you ask for their salvation, that is God's will. He's not willing that any, three-letter word, should perish, but that all come to, he didn't say eternal life, although that is for sure. He said that all should come to what? Repentance. Okay. Words initiate pictures in your mind. I want to tell you what repentance means without going super deep in this. Repentance is two words, actually. If you think of words breaking up into syllables, oftentimes those syllables represent individual words. I don't know if you ever thought of that before. Repentance means to repent. Okay? Re means again, right? I'm going to reestablish the rules. I'm going to reward you. I'm going to, you know, it means again, okay? Repent. Pent is where we get the English word penthouse. That means the highest place. God says, my ways are higher than your ways. As the heavens are higher above the earth, and it says in Isaiah, so are my ways higher than your ways. And listen now, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He says, now the word, the actual Greek word is metano, metano, metaneo. <laughs> I'm not real great at Greek. Metaneo, it means to think in the highest way, to change the way you think. What's he saying? He's saying, I don't want you to perish. I want you to come back to come the penthouse, to come up to the highest way of thinking again. All right. So let me just go on. It says, the supreme will of God. Now, all of these notes are, are again, as they always are in the description box, if you want to go back and review and look at them. The supreme will of God for every human being on the planet I think it's safe to say that in God's mind, there's nothing more important in the entire universe than you being saved. Nothing. If you get everything else right, well, actually, my opinion, you can't get everything else right without the foundation. Okay? You marry the right person, you work the right job, you have the right kids, you know, you're healthy, you're wealthy, you're wise, you don't have God. 
Jesus said it this way, well, what would it profit a man if he gains everything else, the whole world, and loses their own soul? Part of what I'm trying to relate to you is this idea that seeking the primary will of God in your life will put you in a position where the rest of His will is acquirable, is understandable, okay? And you don't have to be perfect, okay? I say you're saying, okay, sis, bless you. You don't have to be perfect, okay? But you do have to be surrendered to the Lord, okay? All right. So the most important thing to God, His supreme will, is very simply that you would be saved from your sin, that you would repent, that you would think in a new way, that you would not think the low thoughts of earthly, fleshly man, but that you would think the high and the heavenly thoughts of God. Okay? So, let me just skip down here. Um, I'm going to give you one final example, then I'm going to end it. Okay? <clears throat> so, I quote, and we talk about all the time, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. Okay. Okay. Here's 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 my uh, uh, justice for America part right here. The Declaration, a declaring. Okay. Again, I'm a word guy. I think it's words are important. Jesus's name before he became Jesus was the Word. Okay. God's communication to humankind is essential. Okay. Man will not live by bread alone, but by the words that come out of his mouth. If you're not hearing the words that come out of his mouth, by the way, there is a link for you at the bottom of the description, okay? When you click out of this, go to the description box, hit the little word that says M-O-R-E, boom, it drops down. At the bottom, there's a link for a message that I think is one of the best I've heard in some time uh, by a guy named Rick Joyner. It's talking about the five tests of the righteous. Super, super important. You will do yourself a favor if you watch that. And yeah, I'd like to hear from you guys once in a while. Okay, I really would. I'd like, you know, I like to, I'm not, I'm not being a baby. I'm just saying it's nice to hear from you guys. Talk to me. Let me know how these things impact you and so on and so on. Oh, and also I want to say, I'll throw it in real quick. Didn't plan on this. But uh, Linda and I are always, you know, we do this for our living. Okay, this, I'm not backed by advertisers. You watch some of these videos and they're, 10 seconds into it, they're talking about some product they're selling. I have no problem with that at all. I just am not able to do that. I don't do that. We live off of the free will and love offerings of those people. This is our primary ministry. We do some traveling. We do some writing. This is the main thing. So if you're listening and you'd like to help us, it would make a big difference. I'll put a link on there where you can do that. Or just shoot me a, a Facebook message. All right. So anyway, last example. I'll be done in five minutes. The Declaration to Declare Our Independence. So you know, our country was under the tyranny of the British rule, which, interestingly enough, the British are going back to tyranny. I don't have time. Go back and listen to my last uh, uh, Words of, or no, Justice for America podcast. And yeah, we made, we declared to our oppressors that we were going to be free. You get that? We made a declaration of our independence. Okay, we declared to another group of people that had us in a level of slavery, and it was slavery, we will not be your slaves. Okay. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, let me talk about that in two ways, and then I'll be done. Number one, the natural and the spiritual. For many people in the United States, the primary thing is the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. That's another document, but you get what I'm saying. The primary thing is we hold these truths to be self-evident, and I'm not going to say, you know, the thing. Okay? <laughs> Some of you will get that. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal by God. Hi, Tanya. Okay, and are in endowed by their creator certain unalienable rights, which are life, liberty, number two, and the pursuit of happiness. In the natural, let me just very quickly say what those things. Life means simply nobody has a right to take your life. 
unless you forfeit that through taking the life of another person or whatever, really, nobody has the right to kill somebody else except for the most extreme. Sort of. That's life. That's your first human right, life. Okay, given by God. Okay, if God allowed you to be born, you have the right to stay alive. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Liberty. Freedom. Okay, the next thing under somebody taking your life away, in other words, like murder or whatever, would be making you a slave. Okay, they're saying this is a right, a human right. Nobody has the right to make another human being a slave. Now, it's interesting that we put that in our, our Declaration of Independence because, you know, the, the colonists were being slaves to Britain, okay, and yet we didn't extend that immediately to uh, those people who were in slavery at our own hands. Okay, that's another issue, okay? But that's the point. You have the right to live. You have the right to be free. Nobody gets to make you a slave. Okay, and making you a slave can be anything from, you know, overly controlling you, hey Kev, God bless you, or literally putting you in chains. Okay, life, liberty, this is the natural, and the pursuit of happiness. In other words, you ought to be free to pursue what you, your God-given desires. Okay, now the pursuit of happiness has limits. Okay, you don't, if it makes you happy to kill your neighbor, boom, you're done. Okay. If it makes you happy to steal, you're done. Okay. So you understand there's parameters. All right. I'm trying to get to a point. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are, are recognized by intelligent humans as God-given human rights. Not American rights, not, you know, your rights as a this or your right, but, but a God-given right. Okay. Okay. You get what I'm saying? All right. This is what most people think is the most important thing. Okay, if you're just joining me, I encourage you to go back and listen to the beginning or some of this is not going to make sense. The supreme will, for many people, the supreme important issue is life in the natural, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the Declaration of Independence. Okay, they can't go beyond that. All right, let's transform that to the spiritual. So we just talked about the natural. Life, what is it to be alive? Liberty means you can't be a slave. Pursuit of happiness, you ought to be free to pursue whatever. Okay, let's talk about the spirit real quickly. I'm trying to be... <laughs> yeah, I have my reasons for wanting to be quick. Aaron, what is life in the spirit? What is liberty in the spirit? What is the pursuit of happiness in the spirit? Because this does revolve around this issue of the supreme will. You shall call his name Jesus. Why? Because he will save every human being who will ask him. He will save his people from their sin. His name means to save from sin. Does that reflect these three things? Absolutely it does. So what is life? Jesus says, I am the life. I am the life. In the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am the life. Okay, so spiritually... Naturally, life means I'm just alive. I'm breathing. Nobody has a right to take away my life, okay? Spiritually, it means the life of God is inside of me. You see, God says, I have come to give life and that more abundantly. And he's not just talking about a good life. He's talking about the source of life, which is a person. Jesus says, I am the life. I am the source of all life. In him, it says, in the book of John, was life and the life was the light of men. He is life. Life is not just a thing, it's a person, okay? That's number one, life. Number two, liberty. He wants us to be free from what? He will call his name Jesus because he will save from sin. He will save his people from their sin. Liberty means freedom from sin. I'm not in bondage anymore, okay? I'm not controlled. Do you know what bondage means? It means you're not in control. Something else is in control. God doesn't hate you for that. He's not like mad at you for that. He loves you. He says, I want you to be free. God's got his own declaration of your independence. He says, I want to give you life. And you get life by asking me to come, the source of life to come live inside you. I want to give you liberty. Sin shall not have dominion over you. He says uh, that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And what is the works of the devil? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to steal your relationship with God. He wants to kill your physical body. And he wants to destroy your soul in hell. It's that simple. He says, I am come that you might have life. Okay? So he says, 
Ask me to come in. Ask me to come live inside you. Do you know how many times the Bible says that God's Spirit will actually dwell inside you? It says that you will be His temple and God will walk inside you. It literally says to walk in you. I know it's hard sometimes to grasp, but He's not on the outside. He's on the inside. What's well, on the outside too? Okay, so liberty, freedom. Nothing controlling you. No controlling issues. And listen... I know what it is to be an addict. I know what it is to be addicted. I know what it is to be in bondage. Let me just tell you this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay? Don't give up thinking God has abandoned you or that he will not give you the liberty that your heart longs for. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to be right, for, for, they, for they shall be what does it say? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Okay? He will satisfy that desire. Why does it take so long? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. But here's the most important thing. The only thing you really need to know is don't give up. Don't give up. If you keep asking and you keep seeking, I promise you he will deliver you. And the, so, life, liberty, and then what's the last thing? The pursuit of happiness. You know, we're not necessarily uh, promised happiness by God, because happiness comes from the word happenstance, and it means, which is very much like the word circumstance. Okay, circumstances for you, God is not a candy man, he's not Santa Claus. You, it says all those who live God in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. In this world you will have tribulation, blah, blah, so and so and so on. Every human being has good circumstances and bad times of suffering, times of joy, not. Okay, but here's what he did promise. He didn't always say, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> Some of you will know that song. But he just says he'll give you joy. I will give you joy in the midst of it, every life circumstance. The good, the bad, the in-between. I will give you joy in the midst of the, the worst trouble that you ever go through. And that's not always easy. I know sometimes you've got to fight for joy. But he did promise. One of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. Not misery, but joy, okay? God wants you to understand what that's like. All right, so I'm closing my thing. Don't forget to look at the link. Let me just recap real quick, okay? The illustration. So number one, salvation means to be saved. And God says, I'm going to call my son's name Jesus because he's going to save everyone from their sin if they want that. He will save his people from what? From sin. Not necessarily poverty, not necessarily health, all of those things he wants to, but the foundation, rock bottom, that you build everything else is saved from sin. It is your sin that you need to be saved from. Okay, that's what the word salvation means. And then the supreme will of God is, of course, connected to that. God is not willing that any person miss that, that any person, he's not willing that any person should perish, but that all would come to repentance and be saved. Okay, so that is his supreme will for every human being on the planet. And then the last thing, we compared life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and the natural. Don't confuse the two. Both are important. But the most important, the supremely important thing is the spiritual life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life because the source of life, Jesus, is on the inside because you asked him to come in. That's what it means to be saved. You ask him to come in. And then liberty, he wants to set you free from sin. Sometimes it's immediate. Sometimes it takes a lot of time, but it's his will that you be free. And then the last thing, he does want you to have a joy-filled life. Hi, Pam. So that's it. If you're just joining us, I encourage you again to go back and listen. Listen, God is for you. He's not against you. If you'll apply these things to your life and say, hey, I'm going to get the supreme will of God as the foundation. And don't just, I know most of you who watch this, you know, probably already have that. Feel like, don't just go, yeah, but I already have that. So no, think about that. Think about what that means. If not for yourself, for someone else who will need that in their life. Again, your kids, okay, it's 100% his will that they all get saved. 100%. He declared it in 2 Peter not willing that any should perish, so keep on praying. So anyway, he's on your side. He loves you, okay? Watch the video that I put at the bottom, the, the link after you get done watching this. You'll be blessed by it. So, all right, that's it. There's so much more I could say. I've always got a lot to say. Thank you for tuning in. If this touched you in any way, please share it with somebody else. And uh, we'll put it on YouTube uh, later on and, and edit some of the stuff that needs to be edited. So remember... 
life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. The supreme will of God is His Son living inside you. So God bless you. Jim out. Give yourself permission to have a great day. Bye-bye.